Coming up next, we have Jean Boyarski. And the last time I saw her speak, she gave a topic I thought was going to be really boring about Java 9. And it was so amazing because she was so passionate and so confident and so, so knowledgeable that it was like even exciting for me. So with that, we'll let her tell a story about something that uh, I, I saw the slides and I know the story, so I'll let her share with you. And as soon as you hit it, it'll go. Every year, I volunteer helping a high school team learn how to program and build Java robots. Today, I'm going to be telling you the story of 2016 and Team 694, StyPulse. Let's get ready. Red Alliance. Red Alliance. I know, I just got through telling you we're building robots, and now we're at a sporting event. That's what this program is all about, making technology cool so kids will want to do what we do when they grow up. The program is called FIRST, for inspiration and recognition in science and technology. As part of the program, they work with professionals, that's all of you and us, to figure out whether this is something they want to do as a career. The team I volunteer with builds two robots every year, an FTC robot, which is 18 inches cube, and an FRC robot, which is five feet tall and 125 pounds, just like me. Every year in January, you find out what the challenge is. In 2016, it was a castle theme. You had to go through various obstacles to get yourself to the castle, and then you had to storm it by throwing boulders, aka dodgeballs, at it. Easy for a human, not so much for a robot. Luckily, we have Java code to the rescue. You can see that there are a lot of different components and electronics that the students had to use and program in order to make their robot work. They also get to learn about the tools that we all really use. The robot is on GitHub. We had a couple hundred commits during our six-week build season, and we use Ant to build the robot. Yes, Ant, the internet is not very reliable at the school, so we're a little afraid to try out Maven there. The robot is built completely by high school students. You can see pictures of us building the robot. And the only adult in sight is just helping, pointing, and guiding. It's awesome to be part of the student-run activity. For part of the competition period, the robot runs completely by itself. We use a lot of sensors and computer vision in order to make this happen. Computer vision has been a challenge for us. And in 2016, they did better than ever before. So I brought in cookies, and I told them that if the robot was able to do a certain number of computer vision shots during the actual competition, I would bring in something better than cookies. I was told there's nothing better than cookies, and there totally is. Pr cunt pr printed M&Ms. <laughs> Ours said 694. We get to competition in New York City, and you can see lots of red. The kids are in their team uniforms with the bows and the hats and the red t-shirts. We're a team, and we're getting ready to compete and field our robot. This competition emphasizes gracious professionalism and cooperation. Yes, that's a real word. We want no robot to be left behind. All of the kids are going to succeed here. Whether they win or lose, they are going to have a robot that competes that they built. Our robot got off to a slow start, and we placed eighth out of about 50. Not bad. We were picked by the fourth place team for eliminations, which meant we made it to eliminations and went on to win New York City. Woohoo! We're going to championships in St. Louis. At championships, there were eight fields. Each field had 75 robots competing. We were on the Curie field. We were a little worried because while we might have done well in New York City, we were competing with teams in places where they have lots of professional engineers. Luckily, our team had an excellent business intelligence and strategy department. They did so much research and analysis to figure out how our robot could compete at that level with the top robots from across the country and across the world. We made it to eighth place out of 75 championship level teams. Awesome. We were the captains of the eighth place alliance, which just barely qualified us for eliminations. And then something incredible happened. There was an upset in quarterfinals. There was an upset in semifinals and in finals by two points. We made it. We won our division. We're going to Einstein. This has never happened in the entire history of our team. We felt like the underdogs, and we did it. You can see the scene from Einstein. We were at the floor of the John Edwards Dome in St. Louis. Our team, we did it. We were at that top level. It was incredible. 
Now, to let you in on a little secret, we actually double qualified for championships. We also won an award called the Chairman's Award. That's the most prestigious award in FIRST because it's about teaching other kids and inspiring other kids. Now, why am I telling you about an award, you may wonder? That's where adults like us can get involved. It's fairly time consuming to actually mentor a team. What's not time consuming is spending just one day volunteering. You can be a judge, a ref, or various other contest officials and be part of this experience. I look forward to seeing you there.